Assalamu alaikum everyone. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'khfiru wa na'uzu billah min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. Man yahdihillahu falamudillalah wa man yudlil falahadiyalah. Ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la shirika la anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu. Ya ayyuhal lazina amanakta kullaha haqqa tukatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon. Ya ayyuhal nas اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم من يتي الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما my dear brothers and sisters all thanks and praise belong to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we seek help and forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil within ourselves and from the consequences of our evil deeds. And whosoever Allah guides will never be led astray. And whosoever Allah leads astray will never find guidance. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah alone without any partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. Amabad. Alhamdulillah, I am grateful to be here once again to reflect with you on one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want to remind myself first, and then all of you watching and listening, that Allah invites all of us to the Quran. And Allah invites all of us to learn from the life and the seerah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is up to us to accept this invitation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But today I would like to talk to you about one of these attributes, which is al muntaqin the avenger, the retaliator. The root word of muntaqim is nun, qaf, mim. And it has the meanings of to dislike, to inflict retribution, or to avenge. Before I even begin talking about this attribute, I want to spend a few minutes talking about the meaning of the word from the lens of an English language speaker. Because English is the dominant language in America, and as Muslims in America, we need to have the awareness that there are nuances between the languages we speak uh, as, as English speakers and the Arabic language. So we know that there are words in the Arabic language that can only be approximated in the English language. And one of those examples uh, would be like the word of taqwa, which means being afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or being God conscious. So fear is a powerful word for an English speaker, for any speaker for that matter. But in the English language, it means it can paint a desperate picture in somebody's mind. So similarly, when I use words like avenger or retribution, it can cause problems for an English speaker. So if I simply said that al muttaqin means the avenger or the retaliator, and I don't add any clarifying statements to follow what I just said, then it could potentially paint an undesirable picture in the mind of someone who speaks English primarily. So the word avenger, if you look it up in an English dictionary, the dictionary will tell you that it means someone who exacts punishment. That is not a pleasant imagery for anyone in any language. However, punishment can also be thought of as compensation. Now you'll ask me how. How can we think of punishment as compensation? Because someone must do something undesirable first before you punish them. And similarly, someone has to offer something of value to you first before they can receive compensation. So let me frame this in an analogy to illustrate this point. So if I have a friend and I ask my friend, hey, help me move apartments. And my friend being a good friend doesn't want anything for me, but I'm gonna do something nice for them. I can choose to compensate my friend by buying him dinner or sending him a gift card or maybe just a regular gift. Retribution or punishing someone is another form of compensation Instead of being a positive form, it's a negative form. So let's say, instead of buying my friend dinner, who helped me move from one apartment to another, you know, I instead pick up a baseball bat, smash his car's windshield window, the very car he used to move my things from one apartment to another. Now, if I did that, my friend will not be happy with me because I gave him an unacceptable compensation. He would likely be very angry with me, and he probably would want to repay my act of violence towards his car 
with vengeance or retribution. That would not be good for me, and it definitely will not be good for my friend either uh, if he went through with that experience. So not to mention, if you heard about what I did to my friend, you would likely think of me as a terrible person who is serving punishment for a good deed. My point being that compensation and vengeance are similar in the sense that their responses to an action. Each response is the effect of a cause. There is a cause that precedes a punishment or compensation. So why does Allah punish his creation? Why is one of his attributes Al-Muntakim, the Avenger? What is the cause for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have this attribute and what can we learn from it? So to understand, we must learn why Allah created us in the first place. If we didn't exist, would Allah's punishment still exist? So from Surah Dariya, verse 56, we learn, and this is a verse that uh, many of us probably are familiar with, is, I did not create jinn and humans except to worship me. So here Allah is giving us our purpose. Allah created us to worship him and him alone. And by extension, follow his guidance. And we have validation of this in the life of our Prophet ﷺ and all the prophets that came before him. Our Prophet ﷺ used to spend, you know, at least two thirds of the night just worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was the best of creations and the best of examples for us. And we also learn from the life of the Prophet ﷺ that, you know, worship comes in many different forms. You know, one of its forms is charity, giving, giving what you have to someone who needs it more. Another form is taking care of orphans. Another form is taking care of our parents or the elderly in our community. So there are many forms of charity. So when we choose to disobey Allah after we have received guidance, this is a violation of his rights. If we believe Allah created us, then Allah has all the rights over us. And this is going against our intended purpose. So Allah punishing his creation is to uphold that justice and to set the example of the difference between right actions and wrong actions. And punishment also serves as a deterrent, which comes back to the word taqwa, having God consciousness or fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as Muslims, if we believe that there is a God and there's one God, and we believe that there is a day of judgment, and that is the day in which all of our actions, good or bad, will be judged, then we should build that consciousness and have that consciousness within ourselves, which is called taqwa. And one who has taqwa in Arabic is called muttaqeen, one who has taqwa. So the concept of God's retribution and punishment is also present in Judaism and Christianity. However, without the, without the proper framing of this concept, it can be easily misunderstood and it can be easily exaggerated, leading people to think that God is vengeful and God is cruel. And we see this come up in our cultural zeitgeist regularly. We also see this uh, in the form of a statement from atheists that say there is no God because the proof is the cruelty that exists in the world. The truth is that as Muslims, we take the existence of Allah, of God, for granted because of the number of times we stop and remember him every single day. As practicing Muslims, we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at least five times daily which means that at least five times a day, we are thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and about his existence and what it means for us to live within it. And we make du'as to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, prayers, at least that many times a day. And as human beings, we also have the sense, the natural sense of awareness, instinctively, that there is a higher power in the universe. And the proof of this, that we have this natural inclination is that when we sense ourselves in mortal danger, our natural inclination is to call Allah or call God for help, call on him for help. And Allah knows that we do this. And Allah tells us about this in the Quran, in Surah Al-Rum, verse 33, we're told when people are touched with hardship, they cry out to their Lord, turning to him alone. Hardships are a way for us to reorient ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if only we realized it. It is a teaching tool from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Knowledge of Allah resides primarily in our heart. And this knowledge 
is reinforced by our ability to reason. And that is a capability that Allah has given to each and every one of us. And Allah calls it out also in the Quran. And reason alone, however, is not enough to strengthen this knowledge of Allah in our hearts. That is why as human beings, as people, we seek authentic religious experiences to give us the taste of that divine spirituality. We all want to taste that moment when we can feel Allah's presence in our heart, the goosebumps that you get when you're in that moment. That is what we are chasing. That is what we feel. And those of us who are greatly inclined in that direction want to taste it more often, more regularly. And we are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we have a taste of that spiritual fruit. And Allah does not promise us that we will never experience trial and tribulations in our lifetime. In fact, we are constantly in trials and tribulations. However, what Allah does promise the believers that for their spiritual practices and the time they spend learning about Islam, they will achieve a state of contentment and satisfaction. And we know this also from the Quran, where in Surah Doha, verse number five, we are told, Wala sofa yu'tika rabbuka fatarda. And surely your Lord will give you so much that you will be pleased. And the Prophet ﷺ reinforces this idea in an authentic hadith where he said, he has found the taste of faith or iman who is content with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as his Lord, with Islam as his religion, so you have a code that by which you live, and with Muhammad sallallahu as his prophet. So the Prophet sallallahu is telling us, if you have these three things, okay, you're content with your Lord, you have a code of life, and it's Islam, and you follow the example of the Prophet sallallahu you will be a content person. And as Muslims, we know from the Quran that one of Allah's attributes is Al-Adl, or the just. So when we are told that Allah is Al-Muntaqeen, the avenger, we should understand that Allah's retribution is perfect justice. He does not punish unjustly, and he does not punish quickly. And we have plenty of examples of those in the Quran where the civilizations that were destroyed. And Nuh alayhi if you think about his life story, 950 years he spent with his people before the uh, before water and the and water destroyed that entire community, including the son of Nuh salam, who was also destroyed. He decided to not go on the uh, on the ship that Allah commanded Noah to build. Um, so that's one of many examples in the Quran. You know, so he gives us plenty of opportunities. Allah gives us plenty of opportunities for repentance, but when punishment does come. It is always justified and it is always fair, equal to the, the crime, if I can use that word here, but equal to the, the, um, you know, the act itself. And as Allah tells us in Surah Al-Anbiya, we will set up the scales of justice on the day of judgment so no soul will be wronged in the least. And even if a deed is the weight of a mustard seed, we will bring it forth and sufficient are we as a vigilant reckoner. Do you know how large a seed is? A mustard seed is no more uh, than a millimeter or two millimeters on average. So that is less than one-tenth of an inch. It's tiny. So rather than we dwell on the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we all should remember that Allah's mercy is greater than any of his punishment. And in the Quran, we are told many times over that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghafoor or rahim all forgiving, most merciful. Every verse in the Quran, we start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim except for Surah Tawbah. In the name of Allah, the most merciful. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. All the blessings we experience in our life come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the blessings we experience are mercy for us. The blessings of Allah take many forms too. For example, when we can make time to pray Salah, any time of day, when we can give our time to help someone who needs a helping hand, when we give charity to someone who needs it more than we do, when we can make hajj and fulfill one of the five pillars of Islam, or when we wake up to go to work so that we can earn a living. You know, we need to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because each and every one of these examples, and there are plenty more, are one of the many forms of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings on us. And we should take the opportunity to recognize that. And we're told in Surah An-Nisa, verse 79 as well, that whatever God befalls you is 
whatever good befalls you is from Allah and whatever evil befalls you is from yourself. And this verse, to me at least, is a reminder that everything I have, and we should take this as everything we have, we consider good. We are able to do, we should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's another place in the Quran where Allah emphasizes this. You know, Allah says, if you are grateful, in Surah Ibrahim, verse 7, if you are grateful, I will certainly give you more. But if you are ungrateful, surely my punishment is severe. One of the scholars, Sufi scholars, Sheikh Ibn Taylor mentions in his book, Kitab al-Hikam, that gratitude entails abandonment of transgression and the adoption of obedience. So if you think about it, every moment you stop and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are not engaged in transgression. That is good. That is doing something that is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you are in that moment being obedient. So you're adopting a posture of obedience towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every time you are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should remind ourselves as Muslims that each and every time we want to be grateful, it shouldn't be just during salah. It should be, you know, whenever we can remember as many times a day until we have this habit that everything we do in our day, in our day-to-day -day life is from a place of gratitude. So the fear of Allah's punishment is an opportunity for us to repent. And the worst of punishments is the hellfire. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, reminds us that when Allah intends good for his slave, he punishes him in this world. But when he intends an evil for his slave, he does not hasten to take him to task, but calls him to account on the day of resurrection. So may Allah not call us to account on the day of resurrection and call us to account in this world, inshallah khair. You know, this is, this. there's a dua that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to make, one of the supplications regularly in all of his salah. Allahumma atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina azab al nar. Oh Allah, give us good in this world and good in the next world and protect us from the punishment of the fire. Beautiful dua to memorize. Allahumma atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina azab al nar. May Allah elevate our understanding of the Quran so that we all may begin to and continue to live our lives under the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah increase us in knowledge and give us the wisdom that gives us the ability to apply this knowledge when we need it most. The merciful. My dear brothers and sisters, you know, Allah's mercy is greater than his punishment. And, and I, I can't overstate or overemphasize it. You know, while one of his attributes, Al-Muntakim, means the avenger, we should remind ourselves that his punishment is meant to be a deterrent. The Quran tells us that our purpose is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we can choose to believe or choose not to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have that capacity. So any punishment that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a way to differentiate between those who believe and those who do good deeds in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who don't believe or don't do deeds that are in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the greater the good, the more pleasing it is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, when we uh, do good deeds, we are wiping out minor sins. And we know this also from the Quran in Surah Hud, where Allah tells us, in al-hasanati, Surely good deeds wipe out evil deeds. And let's pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we receive his guidance and may Allah accept all our du'as and may Allah guide our hearts towards him. In the Muslimina wa Muslima, wal Mu'minina wa Mu'mina, wal Qanitina wa Qanitat, wal Sadiqina wa Sadiqat, wal Sabirina wa Sabirat, wal Khashi'ina wa Khashi'at, wal Mutasaddiqina wal Mutasaddiqat, wal Sa'imina wa Sa'imat, wal Hafizina furujahum wal Hafizat, wal Zakirin Allah kathiran, wal Zakirat, wa Allah lahum maghfiratan wa ajran azima. ربنا حب لنا من أزواجنا وزرياتنا كرة تيون وجعلنا المتقين إماما ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربي جل مكيم وصلاتي ومن زرياتي ربنا تقبل دعاء ربنا لا تزغ خلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوحاب ربنا عليك توكلنا وإليك نبنا ونيب المسير ربنا زلمنا أنفسنا وإلا تغفر لنا وترحمنا لما كنا من الخاسرين إن الله يأمر بالأرض والإحسان وإيتاء القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة وما يصفون وسلام المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين